Hi guys, this is Brilliant Botany episode 8, Herbology 101. Today I'm going to be talking about the real world equivalents of some of the plants from the Harry Potter universe. The first plant I'm going to talk about is perhaps the most recognizable, and that's the mandrake. In the wizarding world, the mandrake is used in the mandrake restorative draught, which revives people who have been petrified. Its scream is deadly, though the scream of an immature mandrake will only render you unconscious. To us muggles, Mandragora officinarum is a member of the nightshade family Solanaceae. Like many members of the nightshade family, Mandragora officinarum is poisonous, and a lot of superstitions have arisen around of it because it's thought to look like a human. It's very wrinkled and branched. It was believed that digging up a mandrake root would kill you, so the technique was to dig around the root, tie a rope around it, and then have a dog pull it out so that the dog would die instead of the human. Mandrakes were once used in a lot of herbal remedies for various conditions, but today there aren't many uses for it. In the Philosopher's Stone, the protagonists fight off Devil's Snare, a tendrilled plant that constricts and strangles its victims. In science, plants responding to touch in order to wrap around things is called thigmotropism. Thigmotropism is any plant movement or growth in response to touch. We don't quite know how plants sense and know to respond to touch, but we do know that changes in growth are in response to changed auxin concentrations. This is also important in gravitropism, which is plant movement or growth in response to gravity. I did a video on gravitropism, so if you'd like to learn more about how auxin concentrations affect growth, you can click on the link here. Devil's Snare, of course, moves much more quickly than a vine growing around a pole. Quick movements like this in plants are called rapid plant movement. An example of this is a Venus flytrap closing. So the movement of Devil's Snare is somewhere between thigmotropism and rapid plant movement. Now on to Mimbulus mimbletonia, a succulent-like plant that squirts stink sap as a plant defense. Plants defend themselves in a lot of ways, and one way is producing latex to protect themselves from herbivores like insects. You can find latex in a huge variety of plants, from milkweed, which got its name from the milky latex it produces, to rubber trees. It functions as a defense because it deters predators like slugs, or insects can get stuck in it when they try to feed on the plant. Latex flows when a plant is wounded, and it can even contain harmful chemical compounds that will kill insects. Latex is stored in plants in latticifers, of which there are two types, articulated latticifers, which are made up of many latex vessels between cells, or inarticulated latticifers, which are made up of few far-reaching latex cells. Articulated latticifers are found in rubber trees, for example, and milkweed contains inarticulated latticifers. Latex is typically white, but can also be yellow or red in some plants. Latex, of course, may not work exactly like stink sap, but both are very effective plant defenses. This has been Herbology 101. One. I'd love to do another episode of this, so if there are any other magical plants you'd like to hear about, leave those in the comments. You can check out my blog at www.brilliantbotany.com for daily botanical content, or check out youtube.com slash brilliantbotany for the rest of my YouTube series. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.